Before we start this video, do like and subscribe to our channel and not miss on any updates. Hi friends, uh, one of the most popular doubts what we have been coming across in the recent past uh, that is, sir, what is net proceeds? What should I take as net proceeds? Whether it's for debentures or preference shares or equity or retained earnings, how do I understand what is net proceeds? My it, people come with doubts saying that sir, institute has taken at times it has taken the uh, issue price, uh, at times issue price minus flotation cost, at times market price. So how do I consider in the, in the formula, generalized way of saying is net proceeds. See, but for a dividend growth model or dividend, uh, constant dividend model where, you know, we say D1 by P0 uh, or D plus G or D1 by P0 minus F, like this. Apart from that, in all the other places, we use the word net proceeds, whether it's for redeemable, irredeemable debentures or irredeemable preference shares or even for equity shares also, how do we understand? Now, friends, to be very frank with you, from the time I have been studying, that was the last 15 years, there have been various versions and discussions and arguments about these points. But finally, good part is, okay, let us not talk about all those versions. Let us put them all of them aside because there were so many versions in the process in this long journey. So finally, what happened is now an institute has come up with a nice clarity as to what to do, how to treat and then understand this term of net proceeds. Let us now look at this. So, what is net proceeds? The question is, what is net proceeds in debentures or preference shares or equity or retained earnings? Now, here friends, let us talk this part in two different ways. Well, first we will talk about this and next we will talk about this because equity and return earnings belong to the same family. There also there is a clash. So no worries about that. Even there there is a confusion but don't worry we will clearly understand whether first part whether debentures or preference shares or equity the institute clarifies the institute clarifies by saying that always prefer always prefer issue price minus flotation cost minus discount these are if any always prefer this sir what if issue price is not given choose market value if issue price is not given. Sir, how do I understand this? Sir, if market value is, if issue price is not given, sir. So, market price is, market value is given. No, flotation cost is given. No, should I say uh, market value or market price minus flotation cost? No. You know, the better clarification, the better language what comes here is, If the term issued at, so what should this issued at par or premium or discount is not given, this is a note, this is a star note according to me, is not given. Assume issued at market price or market value. This is the golden rule. If issued at par or premium or discount is not given, assume issued at market price. Meaning, sir, issued at par, issued at, rupees. Issued at premium, that will be given. 110 or 112 or issued discount that will be given. If not given, assume issued at market price. Meaning what? If it is assumed to be issued at market price, then what is the meaning friends? Then sir, if you have a flotation cost, minus flotation cost. He has not mentioned whether par, discount or premium, nothing is mentioned. Okay, no problem. Flotation cost is given. My issued at market price. Therefore, what should you do? Net proceeds. Then net proceeds is equal to market price minus flotation cost if any 
or discount whatever or i hope we are clear friends always 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 prefer issue price first preference always goes to what price is it issued at friends why does this question come this point is clear now what is the issue price based on that if this is also given consider not given ignore now issue price is not given now issue price is not given then assume issued at market price or market value and then correspondingly you have this reduce the flotation cost this is whether it is debentures or preference shares or equity be it debentures are redeemable or irredeemable both preference shares redeemable or redeemable now equity don't ask whether redeemable or not equity is always irredeemable so please don't ask that question therefore you know why i'm mentioning it because in earlier days there was a philosophy or theory or uh, you know a proposition which you which used to say for irredeemable prefer market values for redeemable prefer book value now all that confusion removed now only issue price focus on issue price issue price issue price clear now now so this clarification you can have friends i am giving you quoting with illustration 17 in our book in our institute material go to illustration 17 you will understand this point very clearly this note what is this note referring to because it has got all the items given in that therefore your confusions will all be removed by referring to this illustration now what is net proceeds with respect to equity versus retained earnings our institute material clearly says for ke for ke go with issue price minus flotation cost for kr e go with market value why sir because kre is not floated in the market but equity to you when you want to issue you have to issue at some price and if there is flotation cost that also have to bear now all this for equity when it comes sir see friends for an existing company when it is issuing new shares this problem will come or for a new company this will come because for an existing company what happens there there will be a market value so should i issue at par or should i issue at market price then that point will be there but for a new company this market value thing will not be there it's a new company therefore there, that problem won't be there therefore to again to avoid all this confusion for ke now ke is equal to d1 by p0 minus f plus g is there no that p0 that net proceeds is ip minus fc only but for kre don't say d1 by p0 say d1 by mv this is there in our illustration 13 this is uh, prefer i repeat carefully listen friends our illustration 13 says boss for computation of ke you prefer this if it is given for KRE, you prefer this. Game is not over, friends. Institute also says, okay, if not, for KRE, if not market value, you can also go for issue price. Don't go for flotation cost. Because it is not floated. Sir, where is this coming, sir? This you can see in problem 5. Institute has given clearly saying that you can, for KRE, you can go with market value or issue price. Not or do not direct quotation cost this is the second preference but it is also still a method considered with the institute therefore for, for examination purpose friends i suggest go with this for ke for kre you can go with this or this but for whichever you are going if you are writing market value you write alternatively in the formula d1 by p0 in the place of p0 instead of market value issue price can also be considered because it is considered in problem number five whereas in illustration 13 it is considered as market value so my suggestion is for equity prefer this no doubt if this is not there anyways our golden rule is there then then for cost of retained earnings you can go either for, if you go for market value write note saying that alternatively kre can be computed on issue price also if you're writing issue price in the formula you don't write flotation cost there you write a note saying that alternatively uh, kre can be computed based on market value also 
I hope you are clear friends. This is about our clarification based on what is net proceeds for debentures, equity and preference shares and what is net proceeds for equity versus return. And one last point here, treatment of retained earnings for KO based on market value. This, is, this doubt is also there in a lot of students. So purposefully I am trying to address this at one shot. You have a direct reference of illustration 16. Please refer to that if you have any doubt in what I am saying friends. This is illustration 16. All right. Now what does this say? See the cost we are anyways doing it will be the same for both. But for the weights what happens? Cost as you know we will compute based on this only. The cost part is over. Now in presentation book value there is no doubt you have book value of equity, book value of returning that we will do. But when it comes to computation of KO based on market value, we will not write the book value weight of returnings in market value. No. Split the market value of equity in the ratio of book value of equity is to book value of return earnings. That's all. This is the rule. Again, to understand this, please refer to, I have clearly explained in the concepts, no doubt, but latest based on the numbers what have been changed. So split the market value of equity in the ratio of book value of equity is to book value of returnings. Cost will be anyways different for, you know, that we know based on this, we have just understood. So these are the special, special points and the most common doubts which have been coming across in the recent past. So friends, please go through this video and once again, in a nutshell, I repeat one last time, always prefer issue price. If that is not given, if issued at so and so is not given, then assume issued at market price. This is the golden rule. Next, for KE, for KRE, for KE prefer IP minus flotation cost if it is there. For KRE, market value or issue price, either of them can be taken. Finally, for the treatment of KRE based on, uh, for, 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 for the computation of KO, for the treatment of KRE based on market values, split the market value of equity in the ratio of book values of equity and book value of retained earnings. Thank you.